I feel so sorry that I can't attend your stakeholder days today in the Jyväskylä because the uh, topic is very timely and acute and interesting. But unfortunately, it coincides the plenary session in the Strasbourg where I have to be present. But I hope that you send your results, suggestions and new ideas to me so that I could benefit them in the work on the uh, European Parliament when it comes to biodiversity, resource efficiency and other legislative uh, initiatives. So as you know very well, we human beings represent only 0.01% of the total life in the planet. But yet we have managed to destroy 83% uh, of the mammals and roughly 40% of the flora on the planet. And actually, as you know, this development so far is exponential because there's more people, more uh, 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 available income, more uh, goods and the shorter time pans of the goods. And a lot of the effects of the construction is uh, destroying the rest of the biodiversity in uh, accelerating rate, even though we have tried and committed to other kind of the actions. So we need to think very seriously what needs to happen in our regulatory framework and in our thinking to preserve the rest of the biodiversity and hopefully to recuperate some part of it in the future. Firstly, we need to increase substantially the areas that are protected by uh, habitat directive or bird directive or natura area or other strictly uh, uh, strict legislation leaving uh, these areas untouchable, even though natura of course is not that total. Secondly, uh, we need what Ilka Hanski ha has uh, created and co calls mosaic uh, protection. That means that one third of the very near nature in my yard, in my housing surroundings, in my uh, city, in my uh, region, in my country, in EU and globally should be protected. And this sort of a continuing from the smallest protected areas to that are restored and left on the natural uh, state to the biggest scale actually provides that network and possibility of, of ecosystem services to functions and uh, the natural uh, local biodiversity to flourish. Then we would need a new kind of a la physical planning that would mean that, for example, when roads are taking more and more places and cutting half of the living environments and ecosystems, we would need to create corridors and upper levels of area uh, covering the roads so that uh, both the flora and fauna can uh, find its ways. And we need to uh, develop a large scale uh, ecolo ecology concept of ecological corridors, meaning that uh, the usual normal fluctuation of species uh, is possible. But besides that, we need new kind of an actions, and this is the ecological compensation. And I'm not in favor for uh, financial monetary uh, ecological compensation, because that easily can create a situation where you can do very devastative, drastic actions and just to compensate it with a minor amount of the money. <clears throat> and that itself doesn't ensure that uh, the actions uh, uh, for preserving the nature would be any better. <clears throat> this is the bad example of the ETS and compensating for example the uh, flying mileage, even though it's better than nothing, actually it doesn't <clears throat> create uh, better uh, 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 flight techniques or better routings or better flu uh, fueling, fuels for flying and that should be actually the actions to be taken. So the ecological compensation would be effective if that would be part of the common agricultural policy as prerequisite of getting any subsidies, this mosaic model. 
if it would be in all physical planning, you have to compensate what you take out of the natural state. And when I'm talking about natural state, I'm not uh, talking about untouchable nature, I'm talking about the parks and trees and uh, the green areas in the cities, for example. And that kind of a compensation idea exists already in Germany, for example. So if you construct a new building, you would need to compensate the amount of land taken and the green uh, pos uh, potential of that area by green roofs, green walls, uh, green in the yards, greening the bus stops and the uh, sides of the roads and whatever uh, is the possibility. And then, and I know this sounds uh, ambitious, it would need to be in the regulation of, uh, and li of lic uh, licensing and permitting different industrial activities. Let's take up the Talvivara mining example in Finland. The price would be totally uh, different if there would be prerequisite to purchase that amount of land and preserve that uh, the future generations untouched, that is the area covered by the impact of the mi mining site. And the Im uh, another important factor there would be that that would set the right price for raw materials that are used the first time. And nowadays, as you know, quite often the problem is that the second-hand raw materials are always more expensive, basically, than the first-hand raw materials. And that, of course, distorts the principle of a circular economy. And by that compensate, uh, compensation model, actually, you would benefit the circular economy in, in one hand, and then on the other hand, you would preserve right amount uh, of the land. And then in the longer, longer run, we would need seriously to start discussing globally what is the amount of land and waters we would need to leave without human touch and uh, without any construction uh, in the future. And that then again would facilitate better planning of uh, construction sites, production, reuse and uh, indeed uh, our urban environments. With all these uh, ideas it's very hard uh, to have a political decisions if you do not have concrete proposals, concrete models and some concrete examples like we have in Germany, how this would function in, uh, in reality. So this is something I leave you with and I'm uh, expecting to have uh, some wonderful ideas uh, as a return. I hope you very fruitful and innovative days.